think it's always uh, safe to say, uh, I release you angels, even I commission you angels to do the Father's will. You know, and then you might say as it pertains to that person or whatever, but that that one qualifier as it is in the Father's will. Well, uh, we have several uh, examples here that will kind of couch or surround this subject. For one, it's uh, Revelation 19.10, when John fell down to worship the angel, the angel said, and by the way, that's in 19, chapter 19 and chapter 22. Uh, he says, uh, angel says, don't worship me for I am a servant of yours and a servant of the prophets and a servant of all those who keep the words of this book. So that's, that's a pretty strong statement. Uh, now look at Zechariah 3, starting with verse 4, when uh, there's uh, J uh, Joshua and God and angels, and Zechariah happens to be in the mix. And Zechariah is watching this thing go down where God says, Hey, angel. Put some new clothes on that guy because he's got filthy clothes, filthy garments. So the angel goes, puts new clothes on him, and Zechariah gets all excited, and he just bursts in. He says, hey, and put a new turban on his head, too. So there's prompt. Right. <laughs> well, in, in verse 7, so same context, same picture, God says to Zechariah, if you will keep my law and walk before me he says I will give you authority before all those in this place so who was in that place he actually goes on to say I'll let you rule over my courts and my house I believe I, I'm not sure if I got those words exactly right but check out Zechariah 3 verse 4 and verse 7 then we have several occasions where people entreated angels they beseeched angels for wisdom information such as um abraham uh dickered deal wield wield a deal with angels on the way down to sodom and gomorrah then we have uh, manoah who is samson's father after the angel showed up to samson's mother before samson was born the, the wife, who we don't have the name, said to Manoah, Hey, this guy showed up and told me I'm going to have a kid. Manoah says, God, send the man again. Well, the angel came back again, and that's where Manoah began to entreat him for information. You know, what, what will I know? What is the sign of his life? Yeah, so there's uh, two or three, and, you know, they're not overt like... Uh, commands you know oh this is a good one um, Psalms it says and the angels hearken unto the word of the Lord and if you and I speak the word of the Lord that's what they're built to respond to so that's why it's important that we hear first as we when we go to speak you know obviously none of us in this group uh, want to do anything by way of manipulation or self-serving or apart from God. And so obviously all of our intentions are, uh, you know, I would say impeccable. Um, but it is important if Jesus, the Son of God, whose DNA were in, in, uh, in the same DNA, whatever, um, if he did not do anything but what he heard the Father first, then that's probably a pretty good pattern for us. I think we're growing, and the growth process uh, pr may be one of the primary things, other than just sheer intimacy with our Father, is the ability to hear and know that we've heard. Our confidence in our hearing capacity, I think, is growing as our history of intimacy uh, in, increases. Uh, I maintain, and you've probably heard me say it so many times, is I don't think most of Christianity knows how to hear the voice of God. And we want to, and we believe it's a valid concept. But hearing is difficult, as Paul says a while ago, you know, there's 
I just got too many voices. Essentially, I got too many voices in my head, you know. <laughs> my own passions, my own fears, the devil, the world, uh, my friends. It's like, gosh, how do you decipher out of all of that? And here's something I try to say. Uh, let me pull in a little situation I was talking through with somebody yesterday. Somebody very close to me is in a kind of an emergency situation they need to make a, a decision and uh, well having to make a decision in six hours from now is not a good place to be because the screaming inside my boy inside my head is almost too loud to hear anything conclusively we need uh, you know it's it's so much better to be proactive over the course of weeks or months on any one thing. Lord, I think you might be saying this, so I'll put this right here on the shelf where I can easily see it and remember it. And then tomorrow, what do you think about that, God? And then next week, what do you think about that, God? And so over time then, we begin to qualify or vet our hearing capacity because it may be that that first impression was an anomaly Everything else we heard after that was, you know, or something different, you know. So uh, one of the big things I think we're gaining here is the capacity to hear. And if we don't hear, you can't live. Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word. And just to make that verse have more punch, if you read it opposite, read it conversely, it says, if you don't hear, you die. That's pretty sobering, but really that's what the verse is saying. So we must develop our capacity to hear.